Oh, uh, hey, Goulash here, and welcome to another episode of... The Gulag. Goosebumps Doomsdays. It's been a while since I last reviewed a Goosebumps story. I think. I don't really experience time linearly, or at the same rate as any of you people watching at home. My existence is a cruel and torturous prison from which I cannot escape. And in that spirit, I'm reviewing Goosebumps Welcome to Camp Nightmare, book 9 of the original series, and both episodes 5 and 6 of the TV show. Yeah, this was a two-part episode, but honestly, all the Goosebumps episodes should probably have been two-part episodes, because the books are all roughly 130 pages long. The single episodes can end up feeling really rushed, squeezing over 100 pages of story into a half hour. Welcome to Camp Nightmare tells the story of Billy, a young boy off to a summer camp, but not just any summer camp. He'll be staying at Camp Nightmoon, which sounds suspiciously like Camp Nightmare. Nightmoon also sounds like the name of a Native American-themed superhero from the 90s. Things start off sketchy from the word go when the ex-Russian mafia bus driver wordlessly drops the kids off in the middle of nowhere, tosses their bags on the pavement, and quickly flees the scene, nearly running over all the luggage along with the children trying to rescue their possessions. This is still a much better experience than taking the bus to a public school in the United States. No one's ever gonna find us out here. Quit being such a baby. Hey, keep cool, you guys. To make matters worse for the campers than just having to fend for themselves in the woods, a monstrous creature emerges from the bushes, intending to maul the children for sport. Fortunately, the creature is scared off by a massive explosion somehow caused by the firing of a starter pistol, which the mustachioed gunman calls the latest technology. Latest technology. Freaks them out every time. Hi, I'm Uncle Al. Here's where the episode is the most different from the original book. In the book, there was a pack of multiple werewolf-like creatures wandering in the woods, which must mean Camp Nightmoon is in Transylvania, which everyone knows is a region of Romania. In the TV episode, though, there was only one creature out in the woods named Saber, who isn't shown prominently again until the very end of the second part. Who's Saber? A uh, Saber is not a who. It's an it. In the book, the monsters were very vaguely defined and weren't encountered directly much either. Also in the book, the werewolves are stated definitively to have mauled children at the camp on a regular basis, but in the episode, Saber is simply said to be a minor nuisance to avoid. Just keep to the trails, and it won't bother you. I think having only one monster in the episode was due to budgetary restrictions, but it doesn't matter that much because Saber is a red herring, and I don't mean the pup named Scooby-Doo character. Saber is meant to distract you from what the actual plot of the episode is. You're led to believe from the start, and based on the cover, that this is a werewolf story, but it really isn't. Which might disappoint folks looking for one, but hey, there's like a dozen goosebump stories with werewolves to look to instead. Saber is simply a symptom of Camp Nightmoon's bigger problem, which is that it's a sketchy, dangerous place to send kids, which, you know, is honestly typical of any summer camp, but still. Uncle Al, the proprietor of the camp, and the dude who oversees the boys' half of the camp, is an uncharacteristically nice and cheery dude on the surface, but shades of a darker side show themselves. I was just trying to make a call. To your parents. Just to say hi. The larger issue with the management is with the camp counselors, led by Larry, a teen version of Gary Busey. Go back to your table, this one's for counselors only. When a kid named Mike gets bitten by a snake, Larry doesn't give a fuck. The camp doesn't have a nurse to treat the injury. There's no nurse? No. What do you think? Uncle Al runs a camp for wimps? Even as Mike is shown to be succumbing to his wound, it's still pretty much tough shit at Camp Night Moon, where you aren't even allowed to have your face in your balls. Okay, you guys, get your faces out of your balls and listen up. If you're looking for a place to put your face in your balls, Camp Nightmoon doesn't got you covered. You fucking weirdo. There are five rules at Camp Night Moon. Go to bed at nine. Campers have to remain in their bunks at night. Campers can't pull an animal house sneaking off to the never seen girls camp. Nobody is allowed to enter the forbidden bunk of mysteries. And campers have to write to their parents every day. You write home to your parents every day, every day. Why the latter? Well, for one, the camp has no operational phone lines. There is no real phone. Now they're not gonna put a line way up here. We're miles from anywhere. And for two, Camp Night Moon is probably hoping to get some good Yelp reviews. Welcome to Camp Nightmare is really a tale of a conspiracy happening at a camp, where things seem to be up, but you're not quite sure what. It's a bit like the Simpsons episode Camp Krusty in the sense that the owner, Uncle Al, appears less and less, and the counselors seem to be in charge and also corrupt. Uncle Al's not here. Well, where is he? None of your business. But it becomes more sinister when Billy's fellow campers begin to disappear at increasing 
missing numbers. Even when Billy watches one of his friends drown to death, though, Uncle Al and everyone else at the camp insist that Billy's dead friends never were at the camp to begin with. I checked the files. There is no camper up here named Roger. No first name, no middle name. No Roger. So there's a bit of a gaslighting element to the story, too. Well, that's not true. I mean, I know Roger. He was in my bunk. Welcome to Camp Nightmare is a pretty creepy episode of Goosebumps that is unexpectedly pretty effective as a psychological horror story for kids, but it does feel pretty aimless. Towards the middle of part two, the episode itself really meanders where Billy searches for all the other campers, but it really just feels like an excuse to do some trippy Dutch angles and upside down shots. Goosebump stories could have benefited from more two-part episodes, but admittedly, it doesn't really feel like this needed to be two parts. It feels like the plot here is stretched thin. Speaking on the end of the story, well, Billy decides to venture into the Forbidden Bunk, where he encounters Dawn from the girls' camp, who has basically been dealing with a similar experience at camp, but it's also revealed that Dawn's friend Dory was mauled by a fucking bear, and I guess died in the middle of the night. We went on a hike and she got mauled by this bear, but our counselor said it was nothing and made her walk back to camp. We finally got to sleep, but when we woke up, Tori was gone. It's very dark, and it leads to a finale where Billy faces off against the tyrant Uncle Al, who has evidently transformed his camp counselors into a paramilitary force that plans to hunt down Dawn for going into the Forbidden Bunk, using mini crossbows to perform the job. In the book, they used actual guns, but you know that wasn't gonna fly on Fox Kids. Spider-Man had laser guns in it. You know they were gonna show a real gun on that channel. These weapons are loaded with tranquilizer darts. We want to stop the girl, not kill her! Well, Billy turns the weapon on Uncle Al. And it's all revealed to be a ruse. Basically a kid's version of the movie April Fool's Day. Congratulations, Billy. <laughs> he passed! Billy's parents were behind the whole thing, all the dead kids aren't actually dead, and Saber was just some Scooby-Doo animatronic operated by a Dr. Venture looking dude. These developments are honestly a bit insulting when the plot was starting to get really interesting too. Hey, show him how it growls, George. Billy's parents are explorers and arrange for this faux murder camp at a government base in order to test whether Billy would be able to join them on their next expedition. We couldn't stand the thought of being away from you for so long, but government rules say we couldn't take you unless you pass certain tests. Better go get your things back, Billy. Expedition leaves first thing in the morning. Where's the family going? The mom points to a poorly rendered 3D model of Earth. Yeah, for real. That's the fucking twist. Where are we going? Very far away. A place called Earth. I guess Billy lives on the fucking moon or something because Earth is extremely close. It makes even less sense because Billy needs to be explained what the Earth is, even though it's visible with the naked eye. Research tells us the aliens there are pretty dangerous and uh, unpredictable. <laughs> Imagine having absolutely no awareness of the moon until somebody points it out to you. This ending is one of R.L. Stein's hackier endings. This was the first Goosebumps book when the series started to be released on a monthly basis. It feels like R.L. Stein was probably rushed with this story, or like he was reaching his 130 page limit on the book and just pulled an ending out of his ass. But the worst thing about the ending is that it's ripped off from the Twilight Zone episode, Third from the Sun, with the exact same ending. But you know, Watchmen's ending was ripped off from an Outer Limits episode, so I guess I can allow it. This is basically the horror kids version of Watchmen. Welcome to Camp Nightmare is an interesting exercise in psychological horror for Goosebumps, but it feels like it doesn't go anywhere for a while, and when it does, it just kind of stops with a rushed, goofy ending. I give Welcome to Camp Nightmare three drops of monster blood out of five. Before I go, I have a bonus animated reading of the book this episode is based on with my own commentary along the way that's available to watch or listen to on Dr. Wolfula's Patreon. Link down below if you want to support the channel while also hearing a monster read you a children's horror book. You fucking weirdo. Okay, you guys, get your faces out of your balls and listen up. If you like this video, like it. And if you loved it, journey further into the Wolfy Lair by clicking the subscribe and bell buttons to find out when all of my latest videos and streams go live. This video was brought to you by my kind supporters on Patreon, whose names are scrolling by. Support the channel today on Patreon and get access to bonus movie and TV commentaries, audiobooks, comic readings, film live streams, and credits at the end of videos. Finally, I'd like to give a very special thanks to my true Wolfie Light supporters on
on Patreon and my YouTube channel memberships for their pledges. Their support is greatly appreciated and helps the channel and my dark influence continue to grow. Thank you all once more from the bottom of my evil heart for your help. Alrighty, Dr. Wolfula signing out. See you all next time at the Wolfula.